Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. May 31st, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. 104 here on the great WRKO. Okay, later this hour, you don't want to miss it. Jam-packed show today. President Trump finally does the right thing regarding Dinesh D'Souza. He is issuing or will be issuing a full pardon. Yes, baby. But first, I have a fresh column out. It is driving the libs insane. I mean insane. Go to WRKO.com slash Cooner. You want to annoy a liberal, really annoy him? Please pass this column around. It's the column they cannot refute. You go to menu, click on Cooner's Corner, the lynching of Roseanne Barr, and I show the left's blatant double standard and hypocrisy by demanding that Roseanne Barr be fired and essentially ostracized and marginalized while giving free pass after free pass to liberal bigots, liberal racists, and vile liberal comments made by prominent celebrities and people with their own shows on TV. It is the column the left cannot refute because it's true. Facts are facts. 617-266-6868. Okay. Joy Reid, MSNBC, Samantha B is now showing us Exhibit A. Let me give you Exhibit B. Joy Reid is a prominent uh, host on MSNBC. She anchors a lot of their after weekend programming. She is a rabid, when I mean rabid, underline the word rabid, anti-Trump leftist. Huge supporter of Black Lives Matter has been calling for the president's impeachment since he basically was elected and believes that all Trump supporters are racist. Again, it's in their DNA. She's being racist against Trump supporters, but let that go, okay? She's an anti-white, anti-Semitic, radical leftist. Well, she's also a liar. And now questions are growing about Joy Reid. The pressure is building and building, especially after getting the ouster of Roseanne Barr. Why is MSNBC continuing to cover up for Joy Reid? Joy Reid was discovered a couple months ago that she had a blog previously in which she made despicable, virulent, homophobic, anti-homosexual comments. For example, her words, not mine, that homosexual sex, according to her, is repugnant and vile. That this shocks the conscience of her and people in the black community. That it's, quote, an abomination. Okay? That's what she said about gay people and homosexual sexual relations. In blog after blog after blog after blog. She then claimed when it was exposed, she claimed that her, uh, uh, her blog had been hacked. Basically, my dog hacked the blog. It turned out she lied. There was an investigation. People looked into it and they said it was impossible. She openly lied about her, um, her website having been hacked, her blog having been hacked. She even asked the FBI to allegedly investigate just to try to buy time, even wasting FBI resources. However, it's now been a month since she claimed that her uh, her blog had been hacked. It's clear it wasn't hacked. So not only did she engage in despicable, virulent, homophobic statements that pale, that make Roseanne Barr's tweet pale in comparison, okay? Blatant homophobia. That if any conservative had said those things, gone. Gone. Okay, gone. And in fact, their name would be mud. They'd go down in infamy as uh, the second coming of Genghis Khan. Joy Reid didn't just do that. Joy Reid then deliberately misled the public and her viewers, claiming a phony hacking story. Then she even used and wasted FBI resources to try to buy her time. She's guilty on all three counts. If Roseanne Barr is beyond the pale, 
believe me, Joy Reid is way beyond the pale. And yet Joy Reid still has her job. Joy Reid not only has her show and has her job, she actually co-hosted a town hall event with the non-reverend Al Sharpton, with Valerie Jared, lecturing Americans about racism in America today. If you can believe it. Now, we found out even more blog posts. She's a 9-11 truther. She actually believes, like Van Jones, by the way, who was a member of the Communist Party, but let that go, that 9-11 was an inside job. That 9-11 was in fact done by the Bush junta and by the Bush administration in order to bring about a war on terrorism and a war on Islam. Now, she's not only a racist, we you, we you. MSNBC, silent. They refuse to comment publicly on Joy Reid, on her homophobic rants, on her crazy conspiracy theories, on the fact that she deliberately lied and misled the viewers and the audience. I mean, she's supposed to be a journalist in theory. Doesn't she know journalism 101? You're not supposed to lie? It doesn't matter. Joy Reid, because she's an anti-Trump leftist, can be homophobic all she wants. She can believe in crazy conspiracy theories all she wants. She can make up and fabricate hacking stories all she wants. She can be a liar through and through all she wants. She's not going anywhere. So, to the liberal left, I offer you another challenge. You won't take me up on Joy Behar. You won't take me up on Samantha B. So I've got you on anti-Christian bigotry. I've got you on misogyny and sexism. Now I've got you on homophobia. If Roseanne Barr has to go over one tweet... What she did was over a period of years, Joy Reid, years, dozens and dozens and dozens of blog posts. And then she just lied about it with a fake concocted stories, a story of hacking again now. If Roseanne Barr has to go, why shouldn't Joy Reid have to go? By your definition, if what Roseanne Barr did was the crime of the century, why does Joy Reid still have a show and still have a job? We know what the answer is. It's obvious. Now, I got to say this. Just before the show today, about maybe two hours before I came on the air, just by accident, I was feeling a little bit hungry. I got the munchies, have myself a Diet Coke. I go into the vending machines, and there's a group of people there. Very nice, very diverse people who work on this floor. None of them affiliated with the station or with the show. And frankly, some of them were minorities. Some of them were not. Some of them were white male. Some of them were, were minorities. And they were just, to me, saying, hey, what do you make of this whole, you know, Roseanne Barr thing? One guy, I won't mention his name, a minority, was openly honest with me and said, you know, I'm a big fan of the Planet of the Apes. I saw the original with Charlton Heston. I love the remakes. I've seen all the movies. When I first saw that tweet, my honest reaction was, she's making a political ideological point. That basically she's talking about the ruling class, uh, the overlords who are the gorillas who control this society, a, a class segregated or class stratified society. I didn't really think she was making a racist point. Then he says to me with the media uproar, everybody going crazy over this one tweet. He said, I then got to say when everybody's getting so upset, oh, the comparison to Planet of the Apes. Oh, my God, it's so racist. It's so bigoted. Okay. He said, I honestly thought it was childish and stupid. I didn't think it was the second coming of the Ku Klux Klan. I didn't think it was the second coming of David Duke. He goes, I honestly thought, A, it wasn't even racist. And then when everybody said it was racist, I said, okay, it's really just more stupid and childish. And my point just being is that outside of the political media cultural elites, you talk to ordinary, everyday people, and they're looking at each other. Why should somebody's life be destroyed? Hundreds of people lose their jobs. 
careers tarnished because of one tweet? Well, listen to this. To me, this is not freedom. I, we're not, we are living in a less and less free age. Political correctness is a euphemism for cultural Marxism. Or as I like to call it, it's liberal fascism. Okay? Listen now to this. This is a CNBC story. Okay? You don't get more mainstream than CNBC. Like Roseanne, I'm just reading to you from the title. Like Roseanne, all Americans are just one bad tweet away from being fired. And I don't want to read to you the whole piece, but basically, here's what they now say. Quote, if you use Twitter, you too are a public figure. And one egregious tweet could blow up your life. And the whole article is about business people, uh, communications experts, etc. Now saying there's been a fundamental change in our culture. That Forget Roseanne Barr. That now employees are petrified knowing that if they go on Facebook or they go on Twitter and they make a bad joke, they no, not even just tweet something that somebody may find offensive. If you just retweet something, say, hey, look at this. The fact that you retweeted something could end your career. If you post up a picture that somebody finds offensive, it could end your career. If you make, as I said, a bad joke or you have an opinion that somebody may find offensive because they may think it's homophobic or Islamophobic or xenophobic or racist or bigoted or sexist or transphobic or God knows what, that one tweet could end 20, 25, 30 years of hard work. Now, by the way, supporting Trump is increasingly becoming a fireable offense. Supporting Trump, because now, see if you notice, the mainstream media line is now, he's a racist, and ipso facto, if he's a racist, all of his supporters must be racists. So to say I support President Trump, boom, that's a thought crime, you're a racist, I'm sorry, you gotta go. That's increasingly now becoming part of our culture. Now, let me just say this, I'm up against it, but I, and I want to get your response, 617-266-6868. If we're living now in a society and in a culture whereby anything you say, one tweet, one Facebook post, one comment, one joke, whatever, your political beliefs can get you fired, I don't mean reprimanded, I don't mean apologize, I don't mean don't do it again. Hey, Jimmy, Jenny, be careful. You know, come on. We got customers, whatever. I'm talking, you're gone. Gone. You're finished. Out on the street, your job is done, and maybe your career is destroyed. How free are we? I have to legitimately ask this question. How free are we? They're imposing now a regime of self-censorship to intimidate and bully us into watch what you say, don't say anything that might offend the liberal regime or liberalism. Because if you do, the liberal regime will strike out and destroy you and destroy your career. Now, this is not Nazism. It's not communism. It's not the jackboot on the throat. But I'll tell you what it is. It's a soft and creeping tyranny. It is the tyranny of the thought police. It is the tyranny of political correctness. It is the tyranny of liberal fascism. Are you afraid to tweet anything that may offend somebody? Are you, are you a closet conservative? Are you afraid to say you support Trump on social media because it may cost you your career and your job? And are we now living in a new climate of fear and leftist intimidation? 617-266-6868. Are we really one bad tweet away from our life being blown up? Your calls next. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. 
122 here on the great WRKO. Charlie in New Hampshire. You're up next. Go ahead, Charlie. Charlie, are you there? All right, did we lose Charlie? Okay. Glenn on the South Shore. Glenn, thanks for holding and welcome. Jeff, thanks for taking my call. My pleasure, Glenn. Thank you. Uh, I just want to start off, Jeff. Um, I'm changing my tune a little bit, but every day the liberals in the media, it's mostly the media, they handpick one person and bombard them. It's constant, Jeff. It's constant. And, and you're so right about, you know, the double standard. And, you know, I, I'm thinking about, you know, they took the sign down for Yawkey Way, right? And then the other day on the news I hear about there's a school in Brookline. You probably heard about it. They want to change the name. The NAACP want to change the name of the school because the guy, the guy's name is racist. I don't know if you heard about that. Uh, I've, I mean, I've, I, I don't, I'm not an expert on it, but yes, I've heard of the story, Glenn. So Brookline, not far from that school, because I know the area, John F. Kennedy was born. You know, what if, you know, 150 years ago, we find out that the, I'm not saying they were, but the Kennedys were slave owners. You know, because uh, this is this is the liberals, Jeff. It's going to backfire on them eventually because they keep doing this over and over. It, what if we find out that the Kennedys were slave owners? Are they going to start taking down signs like the Kennedy Library, um, the Kennedy Space Center, and on and on and on, Jeff? When is this going to end? Well, Glenn, look, I can just tell you this right now. They're going to have to take down, forget the past, I mean, going back to slave ownership, uh, Joe Kennedy, the father, was a Nazi supporter and a Nazi sympathizer. Right. So right there they can get him. John Kennedy often used the N-word. People don't know that about Jack. Jack. I'm talking about President John F. Kennedy. The tapes are there. He referred to blacks as N's repeatedly. He didn't want to sign the Civil Rights Bill. Now, Johnson eventually did. He was very late to the civil rights movement, and only because northern liberal pressure was basically saying, look, come on, you got to do something and support Martin Luther King. So I can prove to you objectively that John F. Kennedy was a, was a racist. He was a huge racist. So by their own standards now, you got to start renaming everything with the Kennedy name. Yeah. So, and this is what's, but they're not, see, this is what I'm, Glenn, my point is this, and that's the point of my column. They exempt themselves. And what I'm trying to tell you is it's not new. The Communist Party, for example, did that. You couldn't own a dacha. You couldn't own a home, but they could own five, six. You couldn't be wealthy, but they could be magnificently wealthy. You see, in other words, they exempt themselves from the laws or rules or norms that they impose upon everybody else. And that's what they're trying to do here. So, Samantha B, we got her on tape. You don't get more sexist or misogynistic than that. Nothing's going to happen to her. Joy Reid, I mean, Glenn, look it up. It's disgusting. Oh, yeah. It's, it's disgusting. disgusting. What she said about gays and all. I mean, it's disgusting. It's vile. And blog after blog after blog. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing's going to happen to her. So, what they're trying to see... and. I believe that Samantha B timed her attack on Ivanka Trump right after Roseanne Barr was fired. Why? Because what the left wants to do is psychological warfare. We just got rid of one of your own for a tweet. Now I'm going to ram it right down your throat, in your face. She's a C. Do you understand that? She's a C. So we can say whatever we want and there's nothing you can do about it. That's disgusting, Jeff. That is really beyond. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just giving you my honest opinion, Glenn. So that's why I'm urging enough is enough. You look, you've got to fight censorship. You've got to stand up for freedom of speech. You've got to stand up for freedom of expression. And at a minimum, you have to say, well, I'm sorry, but fair is fair. So if we're going to have this climate of a witch hunt, and that's what this is, Destroy somebody based on one comment or one tweet. Okay, that's fine. You want to play that game? Then let's play the game. But what we can't do is exempt them now from their own rules. To me, we should change the rules. But if we're going to live under this, look, CNBC, okay? CNBC. I got the story right here. CNBC. They're telling you, if you're an employee, one tweet 
can blow up your entire life. One tweet. And they're openly admitting it could be a joke. It could be a retweet. Now, I'm telling you, okay? I grew up in Canada, as you know, in the 70s and 80s. One comment never cost you your job. One joke never cost you your job. In America before, it was a free society. A racist was somebody with an established pattern of racism. It's not one wrong thing and you jump and you pounce and you destroy. That's a witch hunt mentality. That's a totalitarian mentality. That's liberal fascism. And that's why I'm saying, my re- look, I'll tell you what my strategy is. Maybe if they start losing their jobs and their careers, you know, the golden rule, do unto others as you would have done unto you. I'm hoping they're going to say, mm, I don't think we want to go down this road. Because this is going to lead to social and moral chaos and anarchy, to war, to social and moral war, ideological war. Basically, it's going to be, oh, you said this, you're fired. You said this, you're fired. You said this, you're fired. That's not a way to live. It's not a society I want to live in. So I'm taking the guns of the left and I'm turning it on the left. And that's why I'm saying, fine, okay, you guys want to play this game? Fine. Samantha B must go. Hello, I'm waiting. Uh, let's go to, okay, we don't, okay, we'll get to, we'll get to gigs in a second. 617-266-6868. Believe me, jam-packed show for you today. A lot more to discuss. But first, the president is continuing to demand an apology from ABC, and he should. Evan Heidenrich is in the WRKO newsroom. He's got all of those details. What are they, Evan? Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. 135 here on the great WRKO. Jeff Cooner, Boston's bulldozer, cleaning up the liberal bull. Brittany, you made a very good point to me off air. And if you don't mind, can you please share it with the audience? Por favor. Sure. I'm just wondering, where are all of the feminists um, out there defending Ivanka Trump and calling out Samantha B for this vile and disgusting comments that she made about her. I'm just curious. Um, because I don't think this is comedy. This is disturbing that what she said to Ivanka Trump and you do it in public and you do it on your show. What happened to women building up women and not tearing down women and supporting women? I don't understand why there are no feminists coming out and denouncing Samantha B and protecting and talking about Ivanka Trump and all the successes that she's had. Could it be because for many feminists, it's a woman making that saying that thing about another woman. If a man said that to a woman, all the feminists would be outraged and everything. But now that it's a woman saying it to a woman, mm, well, you know, she's Donald Trump's daughter and, you know, he's a conservative and we're all liberals. So we can't defend her. That's what's going on. It's hypocrisy. Uh, I'm just, I mean, Brittany, in all seriousness, to be called the C word. It's the worst thing that you can be called as a female. In all honesty, don't say it because, you know, just give me your honest. I mean, you always do, but I just want to reemphasize it. What do you think is worse? The tweet that Roseanne Barr issued about Valerie Jarrett or Samantha B referring to Ivanka Trump as, you know, a feckless C? I think what Roseanne said, again, was really disgusting. I don't think she should have went there. It was a bad taste joke. However, I think Samantha B. if you have an issue with the immigration policy that has been in the books for years, then that's fine. However, to call out the daughter for not saying anything about these laws, the, these immigration laws, and using the C-word, I think it's really despicable. 617-266-6868. Okay, so I've been talking about the rise of liberal fascism, growing left-wing intolerance and censorship. Now, listen to this. It's not Jeff Cooner saying this. Many old-school liberals are now saying, what has happened to liberalism? Listen now to this. This is unbelievable. Alan Dershowitz, 
who for most of my life was a man of the left. He was a, a, a uh, an FDR, Kennedy, Great Society, hell, Bill Clinton liberal. Okay? He voted for Obama in 2008 and 2012. However, as a civil libertarian, as somebody who believes in civil liberties, he has been denouncing the FBI's abuse of the FISA warrant system to spy on President Trump. And in particular, he's been extremely outspoken about the, uh, the constitutional abuses of power that the FBI has engaged in. For example, in that raid on Michael Cohen's office, violating attorney-client privilege and confidentiality by essentially seizing all of his records. And so Alan Dershowitz, who has not changed, he's the same guy who's holding the same positions now as he did 10 years ago, as he did under Bill Clinton, and he criticized Kenneth Starr, as he did under Reagan, as he did under Carter, same guy. Nothing's changed. Now is saying openly, the ACLU doesn't care about civil liberties. The ACLU doesn't care about free speech. Liberals no longer care about free speech, and they certainly don't care about civil liberties. And he's talking now about a party at Martha's Vineyard where his friends, who are now his ex-friends, used to always invite him. Well, now he is verboten. He is forbidden. He's toxic among all of his liberal friends here in Massachusetts, at Harvard, and down at the Vineyard. And so he got wind from one of his friends, because he was no longer invited to this dinner party, used to, but not anymore, that the topic of conversation was about him. And why is he criticizing the FBI? Why is he criticizing Robert Mueller? He's gone off the liberal plantation. And now Alan Dershowitz must be shunned and ostracized. Listen to Alan Dershowitz say, I didn't leave liberalism. Liberalism left me. Roll it, Britain. Well, it's Trump. Trump changes everything. Just yesterday on Martha's Vineyard, there was a dinner party uh, to which I was not, my wife and I were not invited, but apparently I was the subject of the entire conversation. People asking, what's happened to Dershowitz? Why is he turned to the right? Uh, and I, w I wish I had been there because I would have pointed my finger at my liberal friends and said, it's all your fault. If you had worked as hard for the election of Hillary Clinton as I did, and if she had been elected and they were trying to impeach or charge her, I'd be saying exactly the same things in defense of her rights, uh, as I did in defense of the rights of Bill Clinton and also in the defense of the rights of Richard Nixon going back to the 1970s. Well, I, I haven't that. changed. I well, have not changed. They have. There you go. They're increasingly intolerant, increasingly fascistic, increasingly authoritarian. They no longer believe in borders. They don't. They no longer believe in patriotism. They don't. They no longer believe in the Bill of Rights. They don't. They no longer believe in the First Amendment, free speech, freedom of religion, freedom of expression. They don't. And they've now become an openly racist party. The Democrats are now an anti-white party. There's no getting around it. And increasingly anti-Semitic, rabidly anti-Israel, and in many ways now rabidly anti-Jewish. Now, that's the reality. And so the question now is, what do we do about it? And I want to ask you in particular, have you seen a change in liberalism? And are you petrified now of a tweet? Are you petrified of saying something on Facebook? Are you petrified that if your colleagues find out you support or voted for Trump, that this could cost you your job or your career? In other words, are conservatives potentially going to face the same doom that befell Roseanne Barr? You're one bad joke away from being out on the streets. 617-266-6868. Tom in New Jersey, you're up next. Go ahead, Tom. Hey, God bless you, Jeff. Hey, Jeff, it's been a while since I've been on. I got like three points. Go I'll ahead, shoot, Tom. I'll the floor is yours, buddy. Thank, thanks, man. Hey, hey, Jeff, 
I've never liked Roseanne Barr, especially. I believe she mocked the national anthem going way back. Yes. She? Yes, with yeah. that, she sung it in a ridiculous way. Yes, so I, I, I couldn't stand her from that point on. But I'll give her some free advice. Take your little show on the road and have some secondary network pick you up, and everybody will get their jobs and you'll get your show back. But anyway, Jeff, congratulations on Dinesh D'Souza. I know, we did it, huh, buddy? We, we did, did it. it man. Jeff, you're the man. Your show gets listened to while men are saving elephants and filling for Jeff Sessions. You're a rocking show. And thank you, President Trump. We got Dinesh D'Souza pardoned. I am, I am thrilled right now, Jeff. Jeff, also, I'm seeing instances in life where these lefty SOBs are trying to vote shame people. They call you out if they think you voted for Trump. Let's push back against these Benedict Arnold Judases with everything we have. Jeff, Alan Dershowitz sees the writing on the wall. He sees the wreckage caused by the United Communist Party of America. He probably has grandchildren, and he's woken up. Better late than ever for Professor Dershowitz. And Jeff, last but not least, please have on your show Colonel Alan West. Oh, we'll get him back on, Tom. I guarantee it. We had him on before. We'll have him on again. He he called out these communists for what they are, and he fell on the sword for us. God bless him. Please have him back. God bless you, Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Look, my friends, um, look, I got to say this. It's breaking everywhere. Donald Trump, President Trump, has now said he is going to give Dinesh D'Souza a full pardon because the government treated him unfairly. This is a cause that I've been working on very hard behind the scenes. As you know, we've had Dinesh on this show. He openly laid out how he was being persecuted. And let's cut to the chase. The reason why they went after Dinesh D'Souza, in particular, that scumbag liberal prosecutor, Okay, Preet Bahara, who is a known Hillary and Obama supporter, a rabid Democratic partisan. The reason why he went after Dinesh D'Souza on an extremely minor campaign finance violation. And by the way, a violation that Dinesh never personally benefited from. Nothing was because Dinesh D'Souza did wrote embarrassing books and did embarrassing documentaries about the Obama regime and about Hillary Clinton. He exposed their criminality, he exposed their scandals, and he exposed their goal to transform America into a socialist superstate. And for that crime, he was a dissident, in some ways the way Tommy Robinson is now in Britain. And they went after him on trumped-up charges... This was a politically motivated witch hunt, a politically motivated prosecution in order to silence Dinesh D'Souza, try to destroy his career and send a signal to conservative commentators everywhere. You better watch yourself because we're making an example of Dinesh. Today it's going to be him. Tomorrow it's going to be you. And President Trump saw this injustice for what it was. It was a crime. A crime against a good, decent, brilliant man who has the guts to speak out against liberalism, socialism, and the communists who want to destroy this country. And so I know Dinesh is doing a lot of interviews today. We're going to have him on. We're going to celebrate this thing together. But Dinesh, buddy, you are now a truly free man. You don't have to spend eight hours a day doing community service. Sorry, eight hours, one day a week doing community service. You don't have to put that you're a criminal now when you apply for work. You can get a passport. You can travel. In other words, you can start living your life again. You know why I love President Trump? Because he's a man of honor and he's a man with a sense of justice, a sense of right and wrong. I don't care what anybody says. Only President Trump would have pardoned Dinesh D'Souza less than two years into his term. And now, President Trump is actually saying he's thinking of pardoning Martha Stewart, 
and he's thinking of commuting the sentence of Blago, Rod Blagojevich, the governor that was the former governor of Illinois who was convicted of trying to sell a Senate seat. In other words, he's almost undoing everything Obama did, not just in terms of his policies, not just in terms of his agenda, but even in terms of the people that went to prison. And so my question to you is this. What do you make of the pardon of Dinesh D'Souza? And should he pardon Martha Stewart? And should he commute Blagojevich's sentence? 617-266-6868. My friends, America is back again. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Chuck in Danvers, you're up next. Thanks for holding and welcome, Chuck. Jeff, you're the greatest, you know that. Thank you, thank you very much, Chuck. Jeff, can I please just have a couple of points, please? Yes, yes. Chuck, can I be honest with you? I'm just, yeah. I don't mind, but to the audience, to everybody, how come everybody always says, Jeff, can I have, make a, I never cut people off. I, no, you I, know what I, I mean? Like, I the okay, floor no, is no, yours, no. Chuck. Make I'm, two points, three points. Go, no, my friend. Jeff, <laughs> I, I, I have to say you're one of the most generous talk show hosts. I really mean that. Oh, thank you, Chuck. Um, but I think it's important to understand, like, when a person has suffered a great deal, they learn that their energy is should be used for, I mean, you, you, you devote your energy to different things. And people who focus on this picky own stuff, it's obvious, A, they're very healthy because most people who've gone through anything in life don't have the energy to devote to such trivial matters. Do you agree with that? That's brilliant. Uh, also, a man's life is a chain. And when you take one chain, uh, uh, one link out of that chain, you're not getting an accurate picture of that man. Bingo. You're not taking a bird's eye view of things. And there's one thing we, we should take. I mean, it's sad for liberals, not for us. We laugh an awful lot, You and I know you've noticed that. We laugh an awful lot. We have a good sense of humor. Liberals tend to really not be that joyful. Chuck, you know, you're making... Chuck, you're batting a thousand, my friend. I just think that we're really, like, forget about how things appear. We're not paying any prices. They are. You laugh a lot, Jeff. I laugh a lot. I know what's important in life. Every night, me and my mom go out to dinner. That's what's important. Treating other people well. My whole day is a series of events. I don't view people as liberal or conservative. It's just a series of events, and how I treat them is how they usually treat me. I, and the, the big media, big corporations, and uh, they, all they're there for really is to divide us. Bingo. Chuck. And so I'm sorry. I appreciate No, time, Chuck, Jeff. brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, Chuck, I'm telling you, a thousand, a grand slam. I'm telling you, you're batting a thousand. Liberals are miserable. I'm, I, I've met so many liberals in my life. They are the most misanthropic, miserable people you ever meet. I'm serious. Feminists that I used to work with in the newsroom. I, I, I. Bitter, angry. You want to talk about haters of humanity? Look at them. They can't laugh at a joke. Everything bothers them. And look at their humor. You know, F you, mother F you, see this. I mean, the way they go, Michelle Wolf, they find that funny? I mean, really, that's, I'm, they're such miserable people. And you know, you touched on something, Chuck, very profound, okay? I really believe this. Every man and every woman should be judged in their totality. Now, no, I'm not, you know, but what they, what they do is they try to take one comment, one statement, one word, one tweet, and twist it and manipulate it and turn you into some kind of a monster. You know, I've known a lot of great people who've done charity work. They work in inner cities. They, uh, uh, they, they want to help minorities. They love African Americans. Okay. They say a joke. Sometimes you say a bad joke. It's a stupid joke. 
It's not funny. It bombs. It's life. It happens. What you don't do in my America is go around and looking at people's Twitter account, or in this case, listening to a talk show host, as these liberals do, and they're like, oh, we're waiting. The one statement, the one comment, come on, something, the one word, and boom, we got him. That's not freedom. That's an inquisition. Patricia in Everett. Go ahead, Patricia. How are you today? I'm good. How are you, Patricia? Oh, I'm good. And um, yes, if I may, I'd like to make say a few things as well. Yes, yes, of course. Um, I loved that last man who called. I think he made a great point. And I am thrilled for Dinesh D'Souza. I think he's a great man, a wonderful person. And I've been waiting for this day. And I knew Trump would do that. And um, in addition to that, um, yeah, you know, conservatives, um, we have great family life, great friends. We love our God. We love our children. We eat together. We may not have a lot of money, but we take care of each other. We respect each other. We don't spend our days looking for everything that everybody says wrong and ready to attack them. And when people do wrong, we try to correct them and ask them to try to do better. And um, I think that's what life is all about. These liberals, I feel like they lie in wait and wait for one of us to say something wrong so that they can attack us because that's all they have what else do they have they don't seem to not believe in god seem to not believe in family um you know my husband and i didn't have an awful lot of money but we sent our child to our daughter to catholic school she's now in college and doing well and we taught her to be fair and kind and good and she's she's doing pretty good in life and um what more can you do and as far as martha stewart and um the uh democrat senator i think that would be a good thing i think that president trump is an honorable good man and um a patriot and i think that would be a good thing if patricia thank you very much for that call uh look martha stewart Blago, I'll be honest with you, I don't know about Blago. Martha Stewart was actually prosecuted by James Comey. If he gives Martha Stewart a pardon, a full pardon, it's the ultimate blank you to Comey. And I got to tell you, I love it. No, no, Jimmy, blank me, oh, blank you. Okay, my friends, a lot more coming up, trust me, but first... The latest news from the WRKO Newsroom. Evan Heidrich has the latest. Take it away, Evan.